Ranger Kyle with Active Living in Parks. Today we're talking about the Native American legacy here in the parks. Different things in the park that you might see every day, which are reminders that Native Americans or indigenous peoples of the Americas once called this land home long before we did. We're here at the site where different projectile points, otherwise known as arrowheads, were found here at Rob Wallace. You can see here, Sometimes it's amazing to think people can find these because they don't look really that much different than rocks, but you have to know what to look for. As you see here, you can see these notches where they were attached to spears or arrows. What you wanna do if you wanna look for these is look for evidence of flaking or where humans intentionally carved it out to form a certain shape. Wet weather creeks like this are a great spot to look for projectile points because frequent floods disturb the soil and expose things that may have been hidden for thousands of years, which is how old many of these projectile points are. Other great spots are recently plowed agricultural fields and even trees that have fallen over and exposed the soil underneath. Arrowheads probably serve as the most exciting reminders that natives once lived here and called this land that we walk on every day their home. But here in the parks, you can find many other different reminders, not only in the land itself, but also in our culture and our language, the words that we use to describe plants and animals, which we borrowed from Native American groups. One track that you'll probably see is this track right here. It kinda looks like a human hand. It even kinda looks like an alien hand, maybe. The word that you would use to describe this animal is raccoon. That comes from an Algonquin word, a raccoon, meaning he scratches with his hands. So raccoons, they have these very flexible and very sensitive front paws. They almost look like human hands. And what they use those for is to dig around in streams for invertebrates to eat. And they can actually identify the invertebrate without even seeing it, just by feeling it with these very flexible hands. So Algonquin was the language that was spoken by a lot of native groups in the areas where Europeans first arrived, like the east coast of Virginia and North Carolina and all that. Those groups like uh, the Powhatan, uh, you know, you think of Pocahontas, they spoke a language in the Algonquin language family. And so most of the words that we have in English for animals and plants that were borrowed from Native Americans come from the Algonquin language. Another example of an animal with an Algonquin name is the possum or the opossum, whose track you can see here. And that came from an Algonquin term, something like wapathemwa a possum, you can kind of see how it relates, and that means a white beast. So one animal around here whose tracks you might see that has a Native American name is the Cody. Cody comes from a language called Nahuatl, and it was something like Coyotl. They don't have an Algonquin term because they actually did not live along the East Coast at the time the Europeans got over here. The English settlers originally called these animals prairie wolves or bush wolves. If not for a cool quirk of history in which we borrowed a word from a Native American language for this animal, we would all recognize that there are wolves running around in Cabarrus County right now. Instead, we call them coyotes. Even the types of trees that live in your area can also serve as an important reminder that natives had a strong history where you're at. This is the fruit pod of the honey locust tree, and natives use this fruit pod for sugar. They also use the thorns that grow on the branches to make weapons and to make uh, different kind of tools for sports and games. So if you're in an area with a lot of honey locust trees, research has shown that you are probably in an area with a strong Native American history because they cultivated these trees for so many reasons. They actually affected where honey locust trees grow in North Carolina today. You can't forget the Native American's lasting effect on our culture, our art, and our music. I'm just gonna play you guys out. Thanks for watching. Woo! <laughs>